Hello there, I'm Yvonne from Prickly Head, lovely to connect with you and I've started doing these um, videos just to put something a little bit different onto my website and for you to actually see me, uh, see my face, see lovely bubble um, on my sweatshirt because you're gorgeous. If you want to get one of these, um, they're on our website, just go and have a look at uh, pricklyhedge.com. And you'll find them on there. Um, so this week, uh, or this week, we've been talking about uh, feeding the birds. Um, and these are really, really small things that each and every one of us can do that make a big difference, a huge difference to how the wildlife survives in our garden and ultimately on our planet. So... You must never, ever get despondent, never get despondent, never get down that you can't make a difference because you can make a difference. Every, each and every one of us um, can make that difference because it just takes small actions, small actions like putting bird seed out for the birds. And it doesn't have to be bird seed. I mean, you could put little scraps of bacon out. Um, you could spread old-fashioned lard, um, you can get that uh, from the supermarket, or the bacon that you've cooked your fat in, uh, sorry, the fat that you've cooked your bacon in, <laughs> that's the right way to say it, um, then you can put spread that onto um, a piece of bread, and you can put some, you know, seeds on it, uh, so it'll solidify in that fat, uh, and you could hang it up, you could just put a piece of string, poke a piece of string through it, hang it on the tree um, or, or the hedge or your, uh, your fence or anything like that. So that's a really cheap and easy way to uh, feed the birds. Or you could put sunflower seeds out or nuts. Um, now I'm allergic to a lot of seeds, I'm allergic to nuts, and so I have a big problem uh, in what I can actually feed the birds. I don't eat bacon, and so I can't put that out either. Um, so I find that my sparrows absolutely adore millet. Um, and if you know anything about budgerigars, budgerigars love millet, uh, and it comes in long strips, and you can buy it at the pet store, um, and you just hang it up in the cage, and they love it. So you could put that out for the birds, or... I put loose millet out. I just buy it from the shop in a bag and then I just fill up a little bird feeder I've got. I don't have any millet at the moment. So what I thought I'd do is I would show you um, where I actually put my, my bird feeder. And just showing you the outside. Okay, there we go. You can see it's a little bird bird feeder. Okay. And that came from the, the lady uh, next door when she passed away. Um, and we cleaned the house out and it's okay. We told the family what we were doing. Um, and then also here we have got Beautiful Cotoneaster. And this is lovely in the, um, the spring because the birds come and feed off it. And then it creates berries. And so let me just swap the, whoop, let me just swap the camera back. Just fall down over there. Um, there's people sort of walking by, so that's why I've come back in. It's still shielding. Um, Yes, so uh, we have the you know the birds. Uh, they have the bees come in um, the in the spring, and and they then pollinate the flowers, and then we get the um, the berries in the winter. And the blackbirds absolutely love the berries. We have got uh, berries on our rowan tree at the moment uh, in the back garden, and those. 
it's just resplendent. I mean, we've had those since I think the start of August um, and the birds love those as well. And so this is, you know, I, I, one one week in September, we will be talking about the seasons. And this is why it's important. The seasons are important. Um, so you might have heard me talking about putting a piece of bread out. You can also put some cubes of bread out if you want. Um, and before anybody bashes me, um, I know there was a big campaign about not giving bread to ducks. Uh, and then we ended up with like ducks starving. And um, so basically, it, giving birds or ducks food doesn't really harm them. It just doesn't do them very much good. It doesn't give them, you know, the range of proteins and things that they need. So they get those from, you know, they eat a lot of worms um, and insects, but also from like peanuts and seeds and that kind of thing. Um, and I forgot to mention that I don't have any lily. All I put in that little bird feeder was just oats, just ordinary porridge oats. Um, and the sparrows come and eat the porridge oats as well. They quite like those. Not as much as the millet. Um, but as I say, at the moment, I don't have any millet. And so, you know, that's um, th that's why I've put the oats out. Um, and the thing is, you know, like, if they're, so that's really easy to do. I mean, you can scatter things on the lawn. Or, you know, you could go for some elaborate uh, feeding station. It just depends if you've got a large garden and you've got the money to do that. But... I shared a little video um, earlier in the week on, um, or maybe it's later, I'm not sure where my timeline is. Um, it's, either, it's either gone or it's coming up, I can't remember. But that's how to make um, a little bird feeder just out of an ordinary drinks bottle um, and a couple of pieces of uh, dowel or just a couple of pencils just to make the, um, the actual perches for the birds to actually sit on. So... As I say, we've been talking about feeding birds all this week. Um, and, you know, it's really important because what happens when the birds eat the seeds, then they will fly off and, you know, their, their droppings then will contain those seeds. And then this is how, you know, the, the planet rejuvenates itself through birds distributing seeds um, through when they have a, a poop somewhere. So it all works together. The universe, sorry, the environment all works together like this, you know. And so this one small action, even like planting a cotone aster plant, will help the bird, it will help the bees because it gives them food in the spring. And then they pollinate the flowers. And then the birds come along and they eat those seeds and berries. And then they drop the seeds in their droppings. And then we have more cotoneaster plants. And this is how we can make such a huge difference. And this is why I'm so passionate about the environment and doing small things for the environment. Because it has a knock-on effect. So until next time, I want you to be, you know, try and get just, if it's only a little bit of bread out there that just sustains the birds for, for just a short while. But if you can put something out, I mean, like half a coconut or something like that, um, you know, they, they, you know, you can, they, well, they really enjoy that. You could make fat bombs, all sorts of things that you can do. Um, and that just helps because you keep the birds alive and them dropping seeds everywhere creates new plants. The more plants we have, the more oxygen we have, that helps the atmosphere and it all just goes round and round and round and it's all good for us. So that one small action of helping one part of wildlife to keep going has a great, it has a huge knock on effect. And if all of us do that collectively, then there's no problem. We're going to, you know, we'll sort the planet out. And I'm not saying there's no need to worry about it. I'm not saying that. But we can do something about it. We can make it better. And that's what I, the, the, the point of, the whole point of Prickly Hedge, the whole point of the books that I write and the, the work that I do and the videos that I put out is to say to you, you, that you can make a difference. Your small actions 
collectively across the planet can make a huge difference. So until next week, I will love you and leave you and uh, we'll speak very soon. Bye for now. Have a great week. Bye.